Just use this, wipe your nose off. It's gonna right. clean your nose. I'm gonna let it dry. Ooh, that really gets your eyes. Now, when you put this on, I'm gonna give you my phone here so you can okay. see. You're gonna put it just right. above, well, like the bottom of the bone here. The bone, okay. Yeah. So, so my put bone's it, like right put it here. lower than you think you okay. should. Okay. Is there any special treatment or anything that I should just, just right it, there? Just okay. when you put it on, and then just push it really hard, you know. Okay. So right above the bone, about right there. Does that there look about right? There you go. Okay. Yep. Real tight, real hard. Push your in, rubber in. Okay. Real good. Okay. What does this do? So what that's going to do, it's going to open up your nose. Okay. Right, so you can get more oxygen in. How is it doing that? It's just, it's, so there's plastic in here. Uh-huh. Okay, there's like plastic, like rods. Yeah, yeah. That help flare the nostrils out. Oh, okay. So right. it's essentially, so you're not supposed to push it down and clamp down. You're essentially having it, See it's, that? it's doing that. Right. See okay. That? Okay, so yeah. it's not just, this isn't tape. This Got is it. actually plastic inside of there that's flaring your nostrils out. So now so when you opening go opening up the pathway of air. Right. So now when you go do a workout, you should be focusing on keeping your mouth shut yeah. and breathing through your nose. Okay. Right. And then if you're a real badass, you put some mouth tape on while you do it. Too. I'm gonna do it. I wanna do the mouth tape. Hey, hey! Let's get busy! Look how thin he is, babe. I know. He, he looks like this. Yeah, he's no, getting he shredded, dude. Right, dude. He's getting shredded down, dude. Pounds, bro. He's getting shredded. My diet has been six eggs in the morning, a full big bowl of mixed berries. Oh, yeah. You feel that, dude? Oh, oh yeah. You feel how much better that is? That's not even well, fair. I know, dude. Dude, our competition better not figure out this recipe. Okay, right. And then I'm doing, I run. Uh, hey, what's up? Ready, ready right now? Every day on the scare mask. I'm ready. What's up, baby? How you doing? Good to see you. Hey. So Thanks for having us down. Yeah, 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 bro. Good. I love it. Hey, thanks for taking care of me with that gig, bro. Yeah, you bet, bro. Yeah, we're here, the Lions Den, with the man. We're doing it. We got a whole event this weekend. We started out with a workout. You would start out with a workout because if you don't get your body right, you can't get your mind right. You don't get your mind right, you can't get shit right. So this guy knows the recipe, and he's starting it off right with a workout. It's well, go time. We we know it but a lot of them don't know it. Yeah. So when they come out, if we're gonna teach them, we gotta start them out by saying, hey, like, how do you feel after you get done working out? Like, yeah. how does that feel? Like, you feel, are you proud of yourself? Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. So like, this is a new ritual. Like, you're taking this home with you, Every right? Day. Yeah, so like, we're giving them a message, but also we want them to go through this experience. 100%. We wanna beat the Sorry. quitting mind too. We're gonna yep. push them. And that's our number one goal today, to push them. Boogie, baby, you ready? Hey, uh, hey, you, you look like you're leaning out a lot, dude. Yeah. 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 Take it easy, easy, bro. Yeah, Dana. Nice. And then I'm going to, so he's going to come to your house. Yeah. I'm going to kind of announce it. Yeah. Super important. This is super cool, right? So we got one of our brothers that are here with you guys. Everybody know who Keaton is? Keaton Hoskins. Yeah! yeah. Cool. He's with us. Now, listen, I told him. Who, by the way, who's, this is your first workout to come with us. Raise your hand. Let's go! Let's go. Oh. You're gonna be tested. You're gonna want to quit. Your body's gonna want to tell you, hey, I'm done. We're not gonna try to kill anybody, but we will push your limits. When you're fasting, you gotta get salt in some way or another. Give me that little cube of salt. Oh, <laughs> 
Today, it's Sunday morning and I start the event off and I, I speak. <clears throat> um, one of the things that I've learned as a speaker is not to prepare a, an exact speech and be rigid with what you teach, but rather kind of go by the fill. So uh, before I speak, I always take about an hour before I speak to prepare myself and that's essentially what this is. We have about, uh, about an hour before I speak and uh, get right because there's a lot of things obviously that people need to hear and I hope that I'm able to be the tool that uh, that delivers what they need to hear, whatever that is, for some type of pivoting moment in their life so that they can make the changes they need to make, become a better husband, become a better father, become a better businessman, just make the changes. So we're about to uh, start prepping for the speech and then I imagine the next clip is probably gonna be me speaking. So hang in there and listen up. This guy, one conversation in one hour, he'll completely change your whole life. You want to have friends like that in your life. If I'm having a bad day and I got something going on, I know I can call Keaton and he's going to guide me right. I know if Keaton's having a tough day, everybody's punching him in the face and it's all going wrong, he can call me and I'm always going to pull it back around. That's what people do for each other. This is the power of the team. So today, I want to share one of my friends with you guys. And just like he's helped me build my massive uh, building, my marriage, he's always reminding me about my marriage. He's always reminding me about, you know, my kids. He's always reminding me about God. It's crazy. I'll call him about business, but he always seems to loop back to all these things because he's checking the boxes. He's always like, listen, man, I get you're putting a lot into that. Hey, let's put that on hold for a minute. Let's talk about fulfillment for a minute. Where's your heart at? He's always examining my heart. Me and Jackie have become very fond of Keaton because his heart is so good. Now, he kills it in business, and that's attractive, but he's a killer in all the other areas. And to me, that's the most attractive. As he's speaking, you commit to one hour with him, I promise you, you will leave here totally a complete different human being. You'll change your bloodline. I love you guys. Let's bring out Keaton. Let's go. Love you. So I want to be really clear <clears throat> real quickly before I start. I, I love speaking, and the reason I like speaking is because I never, ever prepare a speech. So, and I, I make this promise to every single one of you, you're never going to see me on stage. I'm never going to talk about the same thing. I don't have anything prepared. I ask God real clearly, hey, Heavenly Father, help me to express my message, not try to impress. I don't care if you like me when I'm done. I just hope that I can change you. All right? So in that, I realize that I can't prepare anything because I need to be in a place where I can essentially say, what is it that these people need to hear? What is it that they need in their lives respectively, and everybody's different, that will allow them the knowledge, the education, the information to make the change? Now, I want to be really clear. Whether it's me, Andy, Steve, whoever gets up here today, there is something that is going to be said today that will change your life. You have an opportunity right now for the next few hours to be a sponge and soak everything up. Please, do me a favor. Write shit down. Don't be in a place where you hear something and you can't regurgitate it later on. If it impresses on your soul, write it down. Make sure you're in a place where you got a pen and paper. Now, as I was thinking about how I wanted to start, it's Sunday. Normally, I'm at church with my family, but I'm here today. And I want to be really clear about something. I think an outsider listening or looking or watching this would think, these, these men that are up here teaching, these women that are up here teaching, they're using God and they're trying to gain some kind of benefit from it. And I want to be really clear in that thought. If you seek to become something greater, if you seek to have the greater version of yourself, it starts with your relationship with God. Plain and simple. 
Now, this isn't going to be a sermon. This isn't going to be church. But I am going to drop the most important information I can on you today. And I want to be really clear about what that is. I've got a lot of things I want to teach. But God will be the beginning of this. Okay? Now, now, I need everybody to listen all the way through before you stand up and you leave. Okay? Because I'm going to say some things that are very different than what you have heard up to this point in your life about God. Stay with me, okay? As I was preparing, I thought, how or what is it that I want to portray to each one of you? And the first thing, the the thing that kept coming back to my mind was, how do I make them powerful? Really powerful. Like able to move rooms, move mountains. How do I do that? And again and again and again for the last three days, the answer's been the exact same thing. Make them question their relationship with me. What is your relationship with God? And I want to tell you how you change it. Now, we've been told, probably most of you, if you go to a non-denominational Christian church, you've been told over and over, hey, don't ask for a sign, don't tempt God, don't ask, don't do Over and over, we've been told, no, 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 just reverently say your prayer and then be done. Now, the reason I I need my phone is because I'm going to be quoting scriptures. When I was 21, I memorized word for word the whole Bible. It was a lot of work. I was actually a missionary, and I was really stupid. I didn't know anything. And I ran into somebody from a different faith, um, and they wanted to Bible bash with me. And I I was so stupid. I didn't know anything. And I sat there fumbling around, and I I went back to my apartment that night. I was so pissed off. And I said, I'm never, ever going to be in a position again where I don't have the knowledge I need for the conviction that I carry. And I vowed no one would know more than me. Now, that was a pretty big aspiration because there are a lot of scholars who know lots more than me. But I began to memorize from the beginning of the Old Testament to the end of the New Testament. I memorized it word for word. The reason I share that with you is because that was like 20 years ago. I don't have it memorized now, but I still do have quite a bit. But there's some things I don't have that I want to be able to read to you. Now, the reason I I ask this or I say this question, what is your relationship with God? Because let me be really, really clear with you. Your success of the greatest version of you depends on your relationship with God. Plain and simple. It's a foundation upon which we can build, a foundation upon which I can build who I am, what I'm doing, and what I want. So to be clear, if I don't have that relationship, if I don't have that foundation, how am I building anything else? How am I building my marriage? How am I building my business? How am I building my leadership? The foundation upon which everything stands is that, my relationship with him. So I'm going to help you do that today. I'm going to help you strengthen. That's number one. I got three things for you. In the epistle of James, chapter one, verse five, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not. So let me break that down for some of you because I was stupid when I read that. He says, "If if you wonder anything, ask God. And he's not going to be mad at you. And he'll give it to you as freely as you will listen. That's what he says. Now, when I was 19, I decided, hey, I want to go be a missionary. And everybody's like, you don't know anything about God. You don't even know if he's real. So I read a scripture in my faith. And it was a really, really simple scripture. It was a young man who went out hunting with his father. And in the scripture, he says, I went out into the forest and I was contemplating all the things that my father had taught me growing up about God and the things that he teaches and who he is. And then the next verse, it says, let me tell you about the the wrestle that I had with God. I found that word really weird. Wrestle? What does that mean? Exactly. Exactly. He said, let me tell you about the wrestle that I had with God. And everything that my father had taught me up to this point in my life, 
I needed to decide if it was real or if it wasn't. So I'm going to wrestle with God. And then the verse goes on and it says, now this wasn't just a simple wrestle. He says it took all day and all night. Now I don't know, I don't know what that meant at that time when I was 19. I found out. At 19, I said, you know what, I'm going to go do that. I don't know what that means, but I'm ready. I put on some gloves. Maybe I'm going to be fighting with him. I don't know. But he said to wrestle with God. I took my car up into the mountains. If any of you know where I live, I live in a mountain. I went up into the canyon. I knew I needed to be alone. I sat in my car, and I said, all right, if any of you lack wisdom, I lack wisdom. I got to ask, God, are you real? Is, this, is everything that I've been taught up to this point in my life, is this real? Is what you are, is it real or is it fake? I need to know. And I sat there and I was like, all right, give me an answer. And so many times in our life we say, don't, don't ask God for a sign. Don't ask him for an answer. Don't tempt him. And I think that that's bullshit. I think very clearly I was taught that he was my father. And if he was my father, then I'm his son. And he owes me. He owes me an answer. If he wants me to live this way, then he owes me an answer. And I lacked wisdom. So at 19 years old, I'm sitting. I have a big, like, O.J. Simpson-looking Bronco. And I'm 19 years old. And I, I've been there for about an hour. And an hour for a 19-year-old felt like eternity. I kept asking and I kept praying. No answer. Nothing. I said, you know what? Give me an answer, dude. I want to be clear with you. A wrestle with God is when you are your true self. And none of you, none of you, are entering in a conversation with God as your true self. My true self has a temper. My true self gets real upset. My true self is very passionate. And sometimes my true self gets really angry. So I sat in that vehicle for another hour. And I said, come on. Give me an answer. I deserve this. Give me an answer. Little did I know. <laughs> I didn't deserve nothing. I did no preparation. I did nothing that he had asked me previously, and I thought that I deserved an answer. I realized later that if I sought whatever it is that I was looking for, I needed to prep for it. But because he's my father <clears throat> and because he loves me, he did what I needed him to do. I stayed there for another two hours sitting in my Bronco, 19-year-old kid. I just finished college football probably looked like a goofball in my car. I was crying at this point. I was so tired of asking. I was so tired of getting everything that I had or what I thought I had to him. And it was really clear he wasn't going to answer. And I begin to think or I began to think and resign to the idea, maybe he's not real. You know what, if you're not willing to give me an answer, maybe you're not real. And I started to get really angry. Why was I taught by my, my parents about God? Why did they trick me? Why is everyone that I had talked to up to that point in my life impressed so much that they knew him, that they knew about him, that they understood him, that they listened to him, that they talked to him, and he's not willing to do that to me? But he must not be real, and if he's not real, my whole entire foundation was gone. So I started to get very upset. And you can understand a 19-year-old football player who only knew one thing, how to be passionate as shit on a football field, started to get real angry. Now, the reason I wanted my phone is because I don't have this memorized. This is, a, this is a scripture in my faith, just so you know. You're not going to find this in the Bible. And I want to share it with you word for word so I don't mess it up. Let me see if I can find it. Now, if I had prepared a talk, I'd have it ready. I don't do that. And as I'm sitting there, I'm so pissed 
that I start to swear a lot. And I got a mouth of a sailor. And I'm now screaming. I'm sitting in my Bronco, (laughs) 19-year-old, and I'm screaming at God. I'm so angry, I'm shaking. I begin to feel exhausted. I'm so tired. If this is real, please, just give me something. Nothing. Nothing. I said, you know what, that's it. I gave you your chance. I'm done. You're not going to answer me, I'm out. I'm done. In fact, I'm not going on, I'm not going to go be a missionary and teach the gospel. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going back, I'm going to go play in the NFL, and I'm done with all of this. I jumped out of my Bronco, and I had, I had my scriptures on my lap. And as I jumped out, it, this is kind of a crazy story. Most of you are like, he's got to be fabricating this. There's no fabrication to this story. I jump out of my Bronco, and my scriptures hit the ground. And I said, I'm done. I'm done you don't want to answer me, then you're not real. And then I I began to feel something. I don't know what it was. As my scriptures fell, um, my father had given me those scriptures. Um, And I didn't know it at the time, but he had actually gone through and highlighted a few verses through the whole entire scriptures. And when the, the scriptures fell... I saw something highlighted, and it was actually one of the first times, this this is to tell you how much I opened my Bible, (laughs) it was actually one of the first times I saw something highlighted, I was like, I didn't highlight that, what is that? So I pick up, I pick it up, and, and no joke, I'm up in the mountains, actually real close to where my house is now, and I'm on my knees, and I'm saying every swear word in the book, I'm, I'm pissed, God, just give me an answer, I deserve this. I began to wrestle with God, a real wrestle. Most of you have never wrestled with God, ever. And you expect your relationship to be beautiful, and you're not willing to wrestle with him. This is the scripture. And now, my son, remember, it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that ye must build your foundation. That when the devil will send forth his mighty winds and his shafts in the whirlwind, yea, when all of his hell shall beat upon you in a mighty storm, it will have no power over you. and will not be able to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe because of which the rock you are built on, which is a sure foundation, a foundation upon, if men build, they cannot fall. That scripture hit me so hard like a ton of bricks to a 19-year-old, as if he had ripped the page out and given it to me. I stood up. I was so embarrassed. I felt so stupid. I immediately went into, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I went into this fake version of me, like the way I think you're supposed to talk to God. And in that conversation, he stopped me. He said, no, no, no. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this moment right here. I needed you to sift through everything, and I needed you to fight, and I needed you and I to fight together. I needed you to wrestle with me. Most people are not willing to wrestle with God, and yet they pretend all day long that they believe in him, and they try to build a foundation upon that. Well, let me be really clear with you. If you seek to become something great, you must first start with the greatest of all. 
him. Now here's my challenge to every single one of you. I could stand here today and tell you I'm one of his witnesses. I will all day for the rest of my life tell you about my story and who I believe with a surety. I have not seen him, but I have felt him and he has carried me over and over and over again. When I was in the depths of a divorce, when I was in the depths of my business collapsing, when I was raising my children, there were times he carried me. Now, you want to become powerful? Let me give you the foundation upon which you become powerful. You create in you, with him, an unshakable bond, one that you can call upon at any time. Some of you are only here to change your business revenue. Great. Understand that that starts with the most powerful being in the world. Let me tell you, when I knew what I had found was real, my business wasn't growing. Every piece in my business was stagnant. And I sat down and I knelt and I said, God, I know you're real because we've had our wrestle. But right now I'm getting my ass kicked and I need your help. And immediately answers came. Because if any of you lack wisdom, let them ask of God. And it doesn't just mean pertaining to the gospel. You know the coolest thing about truth is it's universal. All truth comes from God. So when I wonder, what should I do in my marriage, that truth comes from him. When I wonder, how do I grow my business, that truth comes from him. When I wonder how to become a better human, that truth comes from him. You know the craziest thing I ever heard? I was with a friend of mine, and we were talking about marketing. He was talking about hiring a marketing company, and we were going back and forth on what this marketing company offered. He stopped me in my tracks while we were talking about what's next. He said, you know what? I'm going to say a prayer, and I'm going to ask God what marketing company I should use. I was so blown away by the answer. I realized that every single thing that I lacked in knowledge, if there was truth to be found, it would be found through him. Now, you want to become powerful. That's what you guys said. You raised your hand, said you want to become powerful. So let me tell you how you become powerful. <laughs> you open up a full line of communication with the only person who has every one of the answers. Every single answer that you need, you open it up. Now, here's the beautiful thing, and there might be some people in here who aren't Christian. That's all right. But as Christians, we believe a really simple truth. We deserve revelation. Every single one of us deserve individual revelation, and revelation is truth coming from him to us. And maybe this is crazy. We're talking about business, and I'm talking about having a conversation with God. You don't think he wants you to be successful? You're wrong. You don't think he wants you to be the best version? You're wrong. And let me tell you the craziest thing I'll say today. If you don't think God wants you to be rich, you're wrong. Because he wants you to become the greatest version of yourself. And he knows when you become that version, you become a tool in his hand. There are people in your life who are waiting for you to become his tool so you can serve their prayers. There are people in your life who are battling things you know nothing about. That God is waiting for you to step up and become the tool in his right hand to say, hey, Keaton, your mom is, she's struggling. And I'm blessing you financially so that you can take her and retire her. Hey, Keaton, your youngest sibling, she's lost her father, she's recently married, and she, she desires to have a beautiful small home with her new husband and her new child. I need you to step up and financially take care of that for her. She has spent so many countless hours in prayer asking if I'm real. And I can't answer her until you, you become what you need to become. 
I want to share with you the greatest insight I have ever thought. One day, every single one of us are going to stand before God. (laughs) And he's not going to ask you all the crazy things you think he's going to ask you. He's going to say real simply, did you become the greatest version of yourself? And did you bless my children? Now, let me give you the most powerful piece. You don't answer. It's the multitude of people behind you that you helped and you changed that answer that for you. And when I stand in front of God, I'm not going to say anything because I will have a multitude of people behind me saying, yes, he was the answer. When I asked you, God, for something, Keaton was the answer. And I will remain silent. And every single one of us will remain silent as we stand in front of him. And those we helped and those we hurt will testify to him who we are. That will be your judgment day. It's not going to be a sit-down report about how you think you did. So please understand the importance of your relationship with him. Step one, it's time for you to wrestle with God. It's time for you to build a foundation. And let me be clear, if you don't believe in him, I'm okay with it, as long as you are sure and you have put in the work. Because I firmly believe none of you will put in the work and wrestle with him and you will not get an answer. One of the things I loved about Christ, he said, I hate lukewarm. I either want you to be cold or hot. And I, I, resound, I, I feel that so deep in my soul. I have no cold bone in my body with a surety. I know he lives. I know he guides me. He guides me as a father and a husband and a business owner. He even guides me as a speaker. He's here today. He's telling me what it is that these people need to hear. And I want to finish this one real important piece, and then I'm going to move on to the next topic. Every time I spend time in prayer before I stand on stage, and I always ask for one real specific message, and I always say, God, I got an hour, I got 45 minutes, I got 15 minutes. And this whole week, every single day, I said, I need to know, I need to know what I got to share. And it was only one thing, one thing. Keaton, help them see themselves as I see them. That's it. That's all I want. Help them see themselves as I see them. Now, for those of you who don't know me and don't know what I do, I actually have a coaching group. It's called Limitless Society. The reason I started that group and the reason I named it that group was a really simple principle, core value inside of me, that I believe that God was my father and that I'm his child and that I am heir to him. Do you understand what it means to be heir to a God? And if you don't, let that sink in. We claim all day long that he is the most powerful, limitless being on this planet. And then we turn around and talk shit on ourselves about our own abilities. The truth is, if you could open up your eyes and see yourself walking hand in hand with your God, you would never question yourself. You would never be in a place of darkness because you knew the light in which you walked. So when shit gets hard, and it will, you continually go back to the rock, the foundation upon which you've been given to make decisions, to be led, and to receive revelation. All day, every day. So, step one, to becoming the most powerful being that you can possibly become is to strengthen that relationship and make sure it's legit. 
and wrestle with him to do that. I spent time listening to my favorite speaker in the whole world. Some of you might know Alan Watts. He's an incredible, if you, if you never listen to Alan Watts, you need to take some time and listen to Alan Watts. He's dead, but he has his teachings. He was standing in a church. He's actually not Christian. He, he grew up, he's a white guy. He grew up in the Buddhist faith and he, he's a phenomenal philosopher. And he said, I, I love coming to these. He was teaching at a church. He said, I love coming to these and I love asking people, do you believe in God? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in God? And he's like, I always get the same answer. Yes, yes, yes. And then he goes, and then I throw him off. No, you don't. And everybody in the crowd was like, what? What? He said, if you really believed in him, you would be running to every single person you knew and telling them. And then when you got tired of running, you would begin to walk. And then when you got so exhausted from walking, you would begin to crawl. And you would crawl from door to door until every person that you had the opportunity to teach and touch, you would do it if you really believed. That's why I asked this question, how is your relationship with God? Maybe, just maybe, it's not strong enough. Maybe it's bullshit. Maybe there is no foundation. And you need to look inside yourself. Let me tell you, if I don't teach you anything else on this arena or on this stage, you want to become something greater, you want to make more money, you want to be more successful, strengthen the foundation upon which you believe to your core who God is and what he is and what he will do for you. He will change you from the inside out. He changed a 19-year-old boy, a stupid 19-year-old boy, more power than I had ever felt in my life. And from that day forward, in all aspects, I was successful. So number one, strengthen your relationship with God and wrestle with him. I give you that challenge. When you go home tonight, spend some time with him. Ask. Give all of your energy inside of you. Ask. God, are you real? I need to know. And I'm putting in the work right now to find out. Because I'm going to do some hard shit. And I need you foundationally to be there. I cannot stand on sand. I got to stand on a rock. And when everything comes, business and divorce and fights and relationships, I have a rock to stand on to make those decisions. And I have a cell phone that I can call you up at any time and you'll give me the truth because you are the origin of all truth. Please, do not take lightly what I'm telling you today. Your power resides in your ability to strengthen your relationship with him. Spend the time doing it. Number two, and I want you guys to write this saying down. Now we're going to shift gears a little bit. <sighs> True perspective breeds discipline. Now I could sit up here on this stage for hours and tell you over and over and over again. Be disciplined, be disciplined, be disciplined. It's the common denominator of everybody who's successful. Every one of you are learning how to become disciplined. And I could get off this stage and you would take nothing. Because if I don't tell you how, then you leave with this idea, well, yeah, I knew I was supposed to be disciplined, but I don't know how. Discipline is what it takes to become physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and financially healthy. Discipline is what it takes for you to get from where you are to where you want to be. And if I left here, you can take that and I'll see you in a year and nothing will change. So let me tell you how to do that. Now, for some of you, you may not know this, but I'm a father of five girls. It's, uh, it's hard for me. And from the time I had my first daughter, I begged God that I could have a son from the very first time. Then I had my second, then I acquired my third in my new marriage, and then my fourth came as a surprise, and then I told God, I said, all right, man, <laughs> I got four of them, and I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do 
everything. I'm taking care of people. I'm a good person. My relationship with my wife and with you and with my children, it's all beautiful. I deserve a son. Well, my wife and I decided we were going to take a little bit of control out of God's hands, and we were going to try to do IVF because I wanted a son. She reluctantly was like, all right, I know what that means. For those of you who don't know, IVF is hard for women. And <laughs> the, uh, the week we decided, um, she came to me. She said, hey, I took my birth control out. We're going to start doing the IVF stuff. I was like, all right, let's do this. Now, if any of you follow me, you've seen my wife. She's really hot. Like, ridiculously hot. I can't keep my hands off her. Which, by the way, a side note, if you want to rate how well your marriage is, you should be rating how often you have sex with your spouse, just so you know. Just a measurement. Now, there's probably some people in here like, shit, we're only doing it once a month. You got a marriage to work on. Okay? Now, I'm not saying every day which is okay. <laughs> At least I hope it's okay. <laughs> but if you want to rate your marriage, because this is one of the questions I ask everybody because I mentor, right? The first question I ask people is, what, what would you rate your marriage? In fact, I got some people in here that I mentor. I, I asked you, what, what would you rate your marriage? And I always ask, oh, it's one to 10, right? And then the next question, how often are you having sex? And they usually look at me like I'm weird. What the hell are you doing? Why are you asking me about how often I have sex? But the truth is, is that the measurement of your marriage is how often you have sex. I don't give a shit what anybody else says. You put any psychologist, any doctor up here to argue with me, I'll argue that till the day I die. Now, we got a little bit off track. So I'm with my wife. She takes her birth control out. We're, we're with the doctor. We're getting ready. We're doing our whole thing. And she, <laughs> she's like, all right, let's do this. Like, I got to do the shots. I got to do all this stuff. Boom, 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 whatever. I'm at an event like this, and I speak <clears throat> a week later, and she calls me. And I knew something was wrong. She's like, hey. I said, what? Uh, I think I'm pregnant. I'm like, oh, shit. You haven't even started the IVF. Oh. So, so then, because I know it all, right? I'm like, oh, this is God's gift. He said, I know you want a son, and you were going to go to IVF, so I'm going to give you a son. So I said, all right, let's do this. And she's nervous as hell because she knows how important it is to me, which, by the way, just so you guys know, I'm going to go till 15 until I get a son. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and I, t I told my wife, I said, listen, I'll start again at 80 years old if I have to. If I have to find somebody, I'm like, we'll just keep going. I have to have a son. So... So she says this to me, and she knows. She already knew the answer. Women are so much smarter than men. She already knew. She goes, okay, well, I think, uh, I think it'll be a boy. I'm like, I know it'll be a boy. I know it's a boy. So, I, so I'm like, all right. And I'm prepping now. I'm, every morning, I'm, doing, I'm getting a son. So she, in her knowledge, she goes and gets a blood work done 12 weeks later, right? Not while I was there. She didn't tell me. And I, uh, I, 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 not that I had forgotten that my wife was pregnant. That sounds really bad. But I had, you know, retired to the fact we're going to find out. So she, she gets the blower. It doesn't tell me anything. Now, I'm going on vacation. I have a helicopter. I have to speak in an event. And then I got to go and meet my family at Lake Powell. I fly my helicopter to Lake Powell. I have a big houseboat with a helipad on the top. So I fly in, and I land on the houseboat, and the, the two people that are with me, because they're in on it, they scramble out of the heli fast. And I'm like, what are, we, what are we doing, man? Take it easy. The blades are still going. They scramble down, and I'm on the top roof, right? I'm getting my shit out. I'm walking down. I walk down the stairs, and I, I pull around the corner, and everybody on the boat is dressed in pink. <laughs> and I was so stupid, it didn't even register. I'm like, what, the f what are we doing? <laughs> and then I look at her. She's like, hey. <laughs> and then I knew. And I have this on film. We have this on film, right? Because I have my content guy with me. And I, 
I, in my mind, not in, not in front of everybody, I lost it. I was so angry. I was angry. And I'm sitting there, and everybody's like, congratulations. And I'm like, I'm going to punch people on this boat. <laughs> and my two oldest daughters, they know how important it is, so now they're messing with me. Oh, Dad. And I'm like, I'm going to Spartan kick them off of the boat. <laughs> I legit think about grabbing my one daughter and just throwing her off the boat. So, so she tells me, she tells me, and I'm, I'm irate. I'm pissed. I'm, I'm mad. Well, she knew I was going to be mad. That's why she did it in front of like 15, 20 people. So then we go downstairs, we go into the room, and she hugs me, and she's shaking. She's so scared because she knew how important it was. Not she, my wife's not afraid of me. I've never hit my wife. I've never done anything like that. But she knows how important it was to me. She's like, I, 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 and, I, and I'm just like, I don't, I can't. I don't want to. Let's just have this stupid ass vacation and let me finish off. And, and I'm pissed, right? I ruined the whole week on the, at the lake. Because I'm so mad. I, I, I stand next to her the whole time. And it's just silent. Because I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm angry. God, what? What, what, what are we doing? And then all of a sudden I start playing. I'm like, well, maybe it's a boy and they don't know, right? Because I didn't know. <laughs> She's like, well, I got a blood work. Oh, shit. Okay, so it's for sure. I spend the next two months pissed. About a week later, we sit down, we have a conversation, and she's like, I'm sorry. I just really want you to be excited. And I was such a dickhead. I was such a dickhead. She's like, I just wanted to feel this excitement with you. We're having another child we're bringing into the world. And I wasn't happy. I was so pissed. And I was pissed for months. Months and months and months. And then I was speaking again at another event. And I get off stage and she says, hey, how did it go? I said, it went great. I think it was awesome. She said, um, are you alone? I'm like, no, I'm with my girlfriend. What, what do you mean, am I alone? What does that mean? I'm like, yeah, I'm alone. We're, we're going back to the hotel. She's like, when you get back to the hotel, call me. So she calls me, and she can't, <clears throat> she can't even get words out. She says, hey, um, I just spoke to the doctors, and there's problems with our daughter. She's not growing. She has some holes in her heart. Our beautiful daughter is not healthy. Oh, man. I hit, I hit the floor. And in that exact moment, I realized what was most important. I said, Heavenly Father, I know what you're trying to teach me. Perspective. Here I was thinking I was hot shit and I needed a son and I was so focused on a son that for some reason I let go of the perspective. The only thing that matters when you have a child is that they're healthy. That's the only thing. You don't care. And she's in tears. And you know what I realized? I realized that I had not become the leader and the father and the husband that I needed to. I was so focused on myself, I had completely let go of perspective. Perspective to be the man to say, oh, how wonderful, how great. God's sending us another child. Oh, just make them healthy. It hit me so hard. The lesson that I learned that night is what I'm sharing with you. I realized that the discipline that I needed to become who I must for them was based on my ability to gain perspective, true perspective, because true perspective consistently breeds discipline that you need to accomplish what you must. So I went home, I hugged my wife. I got to tell you the most powerful thing. She laid in bed and she wept as I, I knelt next to her and I put my hands on her and I prayed and I just said, Heavenly Father, I'm so sorry that I lost perspective about what's most important. I vow, I vow to never again lose perspective because I must be disciplined to be the father and the husband that they deserve. Now, true perspective, it, it, it leaks into everything. 
What kind of human are you? What kind of boss are you? What kind of business builder are you? What kind of husband or wife are you? What kind of mother? What kind of father? See, true perspective keeps us in the discipline that it takes to become those things. Now, if I stood up here and told you it's just discipline, that's right. But how do I gain the discipline? By continually going back and figuring out what the hell my perspective really is. So I got to tell you, just to finish the story, because I know some of you guys are probably wondering, for the next few months, every time she would go into the doctor, I was scared as hell. I'm going to have... I'm going to have a sick, unhealthy daughter. I'm going to have a sick child every day. And it hit me so hard. You son of a bitch. You were so pissed about a son. And all you really want is a healthy child. That's true perspective. The day of delivery, we had to deliver a month early because the doctor said, we got to bring the baby. Um, we're, just, we're too worried about how she's growing and her heart and all these things. And I specifically remember that day, I was sitting at the head as she delivered the baby, and the baby came out, <clears throat> and I remember really, really clearly the, her cry. I heard her cry, and then I picked her up, and, and again, if any of you follow me, I actually posted a picture. She was, she was the size of my palm. She was four pounds, and she opened up her eyes. And I remember looking at her with so much embarrassment. I'm so sorry. I didn't keep in perspective to be the father that you need. And I will never do that again. I was overwhelmed with emotion sitting there with my brand new baby and my beautiful wife. Again, called back to perspective. What is most important? And I vowed again to her, my four, my four pound daughter, I will never lose perspective again as your father and it will keep me disciplined in what I need to become what you need. We left the hospital a day later. She was healthy. She has some issues with her heart, but she was healthy. She's two months old today. She's gained weight. She's 10 pounds. <laughs> And every single morning, I wake up, and I go directly to her, and I pick her up, and I hold my daughter, and she has these big eyes. She's usually awake, and I just look at her, and in that, again, that day, I gain that perspective over and over and over again. And I realized, in that consistent day-to-day -day perspective, I will be disciplined that day, over and over and over again. Now, every one of you are going to do some things that will change your life today. But what about tomorrow? What about the next day? Every single one of you are going to be faced with a pivoting moment. But will it remain? Will it remain? Because remaining is what it takes for you to get what you seek. I want to become successful. Well, it's not one day of discipline. It's not a week of discipline. It's day in and day out. Now I want to share with you how. Some of you don't have the same situation I do where you get to wake up with a beautiful two-month-old and look her in the eyes. Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest philosophers ever, wrote a lot of stuff that actually wasn't even meant for us. And in there, he taught a really simple principle that I want every single one of you to gain. You should contemplate death every day. Now, let me be clear. You shouldn't just contemplate death of yourself. You should contemplate the death of the loved ones. He said that, and I thought when I first read it, why the hell is he telling people to think about death? That seems kind of morbid. And I realized what he was really teaching he was teaching how you start your day in the right perspective to have the discipline that you must to do what you need to do that day. So he said you should contemplate it twice, in the morning and then when you go to bed. You should think about yourself dying. You should think about your spouse passing away. You should think about your children. It wasn't very hard for me to think about that as I held a four-pound baby. 
and it has not been hard since. So how do I continue? Every single morning, I wake up and I do two things. I get on my hands and knees, and I start off with gratitude. And I immediately go into the thought, what if today I die? What if today my spouse passes away? What if today is the last day for my children? What if today is the last day for those that I love? And I'm not telling you to skim over this. I'm telling you to dive deep into the thought. True thought of death will breed perspective. Over and over and over again. Let me tell you the best educational thing I ever got. I knelt next to my dying father on his deathbed. I held his hand as he passed away. It taught me more when I was 21 years old than anything else I've ever learned in my life up to this point. True perspective comes when I place in front of me the fact that every one of us have an hourglass on our shoulder that's going out. And you know the hardest thing when I say this and when I teach these things in a room like this is most likely one of you aren't going to be here next year. What are you going to do? Now this is simple. And it's a little dark. Last night, Andy said to you, you must go into the darkness to find your light. It's really true. The actual principle is simple. If I held up a flame right now, you guys might see it. If we shut off all these lights and blacked everything out and I held up that same flame, every one of you would see it clear as day. So the truth is, I understand, I must go into my own darkness to find my light. Why wouldn't you do that every day? Marcus Aurelius taught this really simple principle. Figure out how you go into your darkness and it should be held or real specifically tied to your death. Every single day, you should spend time contemplating whatever you must to put you in true perspective. And everybody is different. Mine is simple. I ask a simple question. When I, when I lay next to my spouse and she's usually holding our baby, I ask a really specific question. <clears throat> if I leave today, did I give her everything that she needed? I ask that question every single morning. And then at night when I go to bed, I, I go back to that thought, my death. If I died in my sleep tonight, did I give her and my children today everything that I'm proud of that if I left tonight, they would have? This thought process continually puts me in perspective. And every single one of you need to become, in a better perspective, more disciplined. Every one of you need to become more disciplined. That's a simple answer. And if you leave here today and you're disciplined for five minutes or five days, you're going to get that result. If you leave here today changed, knowing you must get perspective, everything will begin to change. Everything will begin to change in your life. What you say, how you act, what you think, what you do, how you run your business, how you have your relationships, all based on one simple principle. If I died and give this as my last, is this how I want it to happen as I go out? The truth, the real truth, every single one of you are going to sit on a deathbed and you're going to ask the same questions that I'm telling you to ask yourself every morning and every night. And on that deathbed, it'll be too late. And the perspective that every single one of you will have on that deathbed is the perspective in which I wish for each one of you to carry every day. I will never again wish and act like a little bitch when I hear my next child is a daughter. The next five. Because I will continue to call upon the perspective that I now have 
to stay disciplined to do what I must. So when that day comes again, I will be disciplined enough to be a good father and a good husband to my wife and to my children. And no matter what I do and what is thrown at me, I will always call upon the perspective. And this is the last thing I want to give you. If you seek to become something great and you decide that perspective is what must shift and it allows you to become disciplined, there's only one final piece, one little piece, and it's the hardest piece to do. All of you probably know what you need to do. You probably have the answers. But your emotions get in the way. A true leader and someone who seeks to become something great for those that they lead learns a really simple principle, emotionless decision-making. If I stay in the correct perspective, things are going to come and emotions are going to come. I'm going to get angry when I hear my next kid is going to be a son or a daughter. But I have the opportunity in the right perspective to refrain back from the emotion that I feel and I make the decision that I should make. Most of you are in the places you're in today because you've made emotional decisions. How you spend your money, how you spend your time, how your relationship is, how your marriage is. It's all based because you can't figure out how to pull your emotion and make the right decision. So, this is a new tool. You should continually ask yourself, I've been set in the right perspective and I'm being disciplined. And when things come, and they will, I'm going to get upset. I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be wild. I'm going to feel anxious. I'm going to feel stressed. But because of the perspective in which I have, I'm going to refrain from making a decision or even making a comment. I'm going to pull my emotion out of it, and I'm going to make the correct decision. That's how you become who you seek to become every single day. Pull your emotion away and sit in the perspective that you must. And in the discipline, you will begin day in and day out to see every single thing that you want, everything. It's literally just discipline away. So I go back to the beginning of what I talked to you guys about. I want to be successful. Cool. Let me tell you how to be successful. Be disciplined. You guys can leave. That's not it. Let me give you the how. And this is it. True perspective breeds discipline. And when you do this simple task, find how to become emotionless in the decisions that you make. Watch how your body changes. Watch how your mind changes. Watch how your bank account changes. Watch how your business changes because plain and simple, you were willing to call upon whatever you needed to call upon to gain the perspective that you needed to stay disciplined and to pull from that one action the emotion that would have fucked everything up. In that, you will become not only a better leader, not only a better husband, you will become the greatest version of yourself. Someone who feels pain and feels anger and gets upset, but does not allow it to dictate the actions in which they make on a day-to-day basis. Now again, I could sit up here all day long and tell you discipline, 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 and it means nothing. So tonight, for those of you who are here with your spouses, those who have spouses, Spend some time, number one, in prayer with God, and then number two, telling them. Telling them how you feel knowing that tonight is your last night on this earth. And then tell them again in the morning. Do what you would do if tomorrow is your last day. Find the discipline that you seek through continually reminding yourself that perspective is the way to do that. Every single one of you Every single one of you have the ability to do and be anything that you seek in this life. The reason I named it Limitless Society was because I genuinely believe in my heart that I'm limitless, that you're limitless, that we are all sons and daughters of God. We're heir to him and we're limitless. And then watch what you accomplish. 
True perspective breeds the discipline that you need to become what you seek. Now, I know I've run out of time and I want to finish with just one thing because I never do this. I have, a, I have this coaching group, Limitless Society, some of you guys know. This is what I teach every single week. I want to be clear about this. This is not a sales pitch. If what I talked about today is something that you know you need, this is what I do every single week, day in and day out. And I know not everybody here, that's their shit, and that's okay. I'm not looking for them. I'm building a community of people that I can teach these principles to every single week, day in and day out. Now, I think, I don't know where, I, I got a QR code. There we go. All right. If what I taught you today is something you know you need to hear regularly, you need to join Limitless Society. I would love to have you in. You can scan the QR code. You can come in. You can be a part of the group. That's not what this is. I'm looking for people who genuinely want to become something greater than they currently are and want to surround themselves with those people. That's what Limitless Society is. And every year, I throw a ginormous event, one of the most life-changing events in the world. I just did it in September, and I'm doing it in, uh, in April, on April 26th and April 27th. I'm filling an arena with 12,000 people. I have the world's greatest speakers coming. I, do you have the list? Uh, I heard Donald Trump Jr. is going to be Donald there. Trump Jr. Can I get coming. an amen? I've got David Goggins coming, Ed Milet, Andy Elliott's coming. I mean, Let's I have go. all of the best speakers in the world. Now, the reason I'm sharing this with you is because here's what I'm willing to do. For those of you who join Limitless, you come to the event for free. The event's between $300 to $3,000, okay? You join Limitless, you come to the events for free from here on out. So if that's something you want to do, I would love for you to join Limitless. And if what you heard today is what you want to continually hear, you need to be in. Plain and simple. Scan it. Now, number two, and this is, this is the big one for me. At my event, I don't just throw a cool event. It's not just like this life-changing thing. I purposely plan out a very specific network of meetings the night before. At my house, I have what I call a VIP experience. It's $10,000 to come. At my house... All of the speakers that you get to see on the stages, you get to sit on a couch with and have conversations with. I've got, just because I like to entertain, I've got Ludacris and Nelly coming to perform at the house. I've got David Goggins coming, Ed Milet, Andy Elliott, all kinds of crazy. I have phenomenal speakers. I don't even have the list in front of me. If you guys feel like you're that caliber of person that want to be in those rooms, again, this isn't a sales pitch for me. Whoever brought you here to this, whatever coach brought you here, you can get with them and we'll get you in. Now, I want to be clear. I only let 100 people come to the VIP event. I only let 100 people because it's really important to me that the people in the caliber that are there are small so that they have the opportunity to really network and really change. If that's what you seek when you're done, you don't need to do it right now. Get with your, the person that brought you here and they'll get you into the VIP. Again, if you want to come to the Limitless Arena and you don't want to be a part of Limitless, totally fine. Pay a ticket. If you want to hear what I have to say every single week, scan the QR code, get in Limitless Society. Be in a place where you plug in every single day to hear this shit. These events are great. Andy's learned to teach and do this month by month. You want to be successful, you got to plug in day by day. You're in a great spot, every single one of you. Get into a place where you're plugged into something every single day. Now, before I finish, because I, I always do this, I would love to shake everybody's hand. I would love to meet you. And I always leave these. Everybody asks if I can do one-on-one -on -one mentoring with you. <laughs> and there's about 10 people in here that I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring with. If you want to do one-on-one -on -one mentoring, please don't talk to me about it. Um, Mike, you stand up. Mike's my guy. Because again, every time I finish these, people want to talk about doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring. If that's what you want, again, I don't want to talk to you because I don't want to sell you on it. Mike's the guy. I want to finish with something. Thanks, Mike. I want to finish something, then I'll get off the damn stage. I want to go back to the very, very message that I got. Help them see themselves as I see them. 
I will spend the rest of my life spending as much time and energy and money as I have to portray that message that I continually hear from God. I will go to the ends of the earth to get you to open up your eyes and even for one moment see yourself as God sees you. And in that, guess what's going to happen? You will realize who you really are. You are an heir to God. And if you understand that, even if you just grasp that for a minute, everything you do and say and become becomes really, really clear and much, much easier. So please, hear that message. If you could see yourself as he sees you and as I see you, that's why I spend my time doing this. Your ability is so much greater than you currently have given or you currently have. Please, find it, see it, and then become it. Thank you, guys.